Representative Felipe talked about uh, funding for education and you know what we promised our constituents in in the budget last year was approximately 150 million dollars mm. in um, in funding to help um, and just to rewind with what you talked about um, you, you you talked about lessening it by almost 50 million dollars um, and you and you and you stated the reasons. Um, why? I just wanted you to just repeat that for me. Sure. Uh, I know the slide talks about ECS funding, charter schools, um, but these are are still areas that um, you know our constituents are are, are looking for um, help to try and better our educational system, um, and promising them um, 150 million dollars, and then shifting things to kind of make it look like that. Um, we're doing increases and we're, we're, we're fully funding, but only to statutory amounts, knowing, especially for charter schools, um, how much we should be funding in charter schools versus how much we are. Um, and the same with ECS funding, uh, what we should be funding in ECS funding versus what we are. Um, it just seems like we're short sighting um, our vision um, and we're cutting back on the promises that we um, shared or or came up with for our constituents um, over the last couple of years. So can you just kind of like highlight um, that 50 million that you're talking about? Sure. The 50 million didn't promise your constituents anything new in education. It was not new resources going anywhere. It was a cost shift of existing uh, expenditures from the towns, the magnet sending districts to the state. Wasn't buying new teachers, didn't buy new slots, didn't give anybody a pay raise. No new resources were promised by you or anyone with that $50 million. It was just the state was going to pay some stuff that the towns are paying for. Nothing new. Okay. So we, we are uh, we're, we're recommending you spend more on education in terms of resources in the classroom than is in the enacted budget. There was about $102 million available for new resources in the classroom. We're recommending $107 million because we're adjusting the ECS number up for uh, uh, expenses we've identified since then for ECS. So where do we get the $50 million that we need? That is touch savings. On? That is savings to the state, to the general fund, that we're not going to pay if we don't do this magnet school, subs, uh, magnet school tuition cap change where the, the sending districts are capped at 58% of the liability to the, to the magnet schools and the state pays the difference. If we don't make that change, the state saves that $50 million and we can spend it on education and other programming. Okay. Um, and in regards to the guardrails, the volatility cap, you know, at what point does, because to, to, to my constituents, actually to all our constituents, um, a crisis such as education, a crisis such as housing, a crisis such as transportation, those are emergencies. Um, and, and how or what, what level do you put emergencies at? You know, you know what, what level do we, because it seems like different levels of emergencies. You know, our homeless persons have never been, uh, our homeless population have never been at this size. Um, I consider that an emergency. Um, our critical, our crisis, children crisis centers that we just got, that's another emergency. And I know um, you talked about funding that, but the question is, um, you know, of, of course the amount. Um, uh, you know, our food deserts in some of our communities, that's an emergency. Um, so if we're still in an emergency, why are we not finding the funding or taking that volatility cap um, or that guardrail and saying we are doing very well in savings and putting money away for the pensions. But sometimes I think what, what was planned to do years ago compared to now has probably exceeded well beyond what the expectation was, especially with our surplus. Mm -hmm. So why would we not pull money from those areas that we've done exceedingly well two, three times, probably even four times more than what we expected and take care of some of these emergencies? Um, 
where our constituents can really feel it. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're doing a great job, I believe. But to us, an emergency compared to what our folk think are emergency, I think are two different, two different levels of emergency. And I'd like to try and reach the emergencies that our constituents are in, not the emergencies that we always think we're taking care of. Because I don't think that we're always doing as great as we can to answer the emergencies that our constituents are in. So how can we, is it a legislation change? Is it, I mean, because the, the, the governor can say an emergency is an emergency and he can shift some of that funding. Well, you're a member of the Appropriations Committee and we have an enacted two-year budget that made a bunch of choices and made some resources available. We are recommending in our adjustments uh, new, new resources for two of the things you mentioned, the urgent crisis centers for behavioral health as well as the homelessness issue. Within the context of our uh, budget, within the context of our resources, working with uh, the Appropriations Committee, we can come to new spending levels on, on all of that <coughs> stuff that we talked about, but we should at least see if we can do so within a balanced budget that complies with all of our caps for the reasons that I just talked to Representative Johnson about. Because if we depart from that, we may lose that ability in the future and we may have to cut spending for stuff that you, you care about and you wouldn't want to see cut in the future. So for that stability, for that ability for us to continue to have those resources available for these important issues, which we quite agree with you, they're important. We're happy to work with the Appropriations Committee on, on all those spending levels and all those categories. But we have some rules. We can, we can probably do more on some of those categories, but we're going to have to figure out what those allocations are. And I'm happy to work with the committee to do that. OK, so when you say we have rules, and obviously legislators understand the rules, but there are also, <coughs> I think, rules that um, could change the rules, correct? Um, where that we can use more funding and we can invest more in those areas um, that we think are emergencies. 